Our first element of art, which is line, is perhaps the most simple of all of our elements. And line is all about connections. Just like in mathematical terms, line is a path or a connection between two points. Line has many different qualities. Lines can vary in thickness. They can be thin, they can be thick. You can see that when a drawing is just flat and only uses one quality of line, it lacks dimensionality as opposed to when it starts to vary in its qualities. Line can also be geometric or organic. Geometric lines are often hard for humans to replicate and they require mechanical aid. So when we see geometric lines in art, it often feels mechanical or cold because it doesn't represent the human hand. On the other hand, you may have organic lines. Organic lines are curved. They don't follow mathematical rules necessarily. So organic lines remind us of nature. They can often be associated with femininity or gracefulness as well. The Art Nouveau period relied especially on organic lines because the Art Nouveau period celebrated nature. And so it didn't rely on straight edges, but rather on sinuous curves. Line can also be continuous or implied. So a continuous line is a very direct connection, very visible between two points, but an implied line only gives you the indications of a connection. Consider how road lines, whether they are actual or implied, direct where your car can and cannot go. We'll look at some examples of how implied line can actually be used as a powerful tool that when a connection is only implied rather than being a statement of fact, it can be used to send very important messages in art. For example, we have this painting by Titian and in it we have three separate layers. One of the people of earth on the ground, one of Mary the Madonna in the middle above the clouds surrounded by cherubim and other servants of God. And then at the very top, we have God, the most powerful, with this we know visually because of his placement at the top. And if you look very carefully, all those three layers are all very separate from one another, yet there are implied lines throughout which tell stories in this, the assumption of the Virgin. So Mary uh, ascending up into heaven. On the bottom, you see the people reaching towards Mary and God above them, showing their desire to leave behind the earth. Yet, because they are not physically connected, you realize that this is impossible. However, in the next level, you see that Mary, too, is reaching up and above. She is herself reaching towards God as a semi-divine figure in the Catholic tradition, yet she is not fully divine. However, her hands and her gaze, which look upwards, creating implied lines, are returned by the gaze of God towards her, showing that he shows her favor as well, through the strengthened implied connection. What this story tells you then is that people on the bottom are sinful and unable to reach the glory of God, yet Mary is bridging that gap between sinful humanity and the perfect divinity. Here now we have a scene, a fresco from the Sistine Chapel ceiling painted by Michelangelo. This is a very famous scene, the creation of Adam. And in here, there is one very prominent implied line. So the question for you to answer today is, what is this implied line in the painting that forms such a crucial part of the story of the creation of Adam? And what does the fact that this is an implied line rather than an actual complete physical connection change about the interpretation of the story. So what does it change about these two figures and their relationship? 
to one another. Line position is also very important when analyzing artworks. The way that a line is placed sends a very important message in an artwork, whether it's on a canvas or a sculpture or an architecture. One of the best ways in order to decipher line position and its meaning is to think of the human body as a reference. The human body, when it is vertical, must be alert. You cannot stand, for the most part, while you are sleeping. So alert bodies are vertical. They also represent authority because they tower over you as well. Diagonal lines are lines of action and movement. When you think about the human body, it can't stay in a diagonal position forever. You are generally associating moving diagonally with motion, with movement. It's not a permanent position. And then, of course, the horizontal line references the body at rest. So horizontal lines represent peace and calm. And they can also be connected to the Earth's horizon, which can give senses of vastness or overwhelming space. So here is your next question. How do diagonal lines relate to action or vitality when compared to the human body? Beyond qualities and positions of line, line can also be used in a variety of ways. There are contour lines in art. Contours are the edges or the outlines rather than the details of a work. There are descriptive lines. Descriptive lines are the lines of the details. So these gives you feelings of the flow of a surface in a body of work. The Nazca lines in Peru are wonderful examples of contour line in action. What's also amazing about these is that their scale is so large that the people who were working on them could not actually see what their contour was creating. They can only be seen from many miles away. And so there must have been a complex system of communication and layout in works in order to create these lines, a system which did not have the advantages of modern technology. Christo and Jean-Claude use contour lines to send a message during their Surrounded Islands installation in the 1980s. This installation was in tandem with the cleanup of the Miami Bay. And so what these lines did was these pink plastic outlines of the islands went out as far as the trash in the bay that had gathered around them and surrounded the islands. So what it did by changing it from the muddy floating trash to this very bright fluorescent pink line is it made very visible to the citizens of Miami the really deep impact of their pollution on the area around them. And so by using line in that very powerful way, it made visible something that was easy to ignore. Descriptive lines are lines of detail. These lines show the flow of surfaces. Descriptive lines can be used to create textures on works of art. So you'll see how elements of art can be added onto one another to create further elements down the line. Just as line creates shape, line can also create texture and create illusions of value as well. One of the great ways in which line does that is through the techniques of hatching and cross-hatching. So hatching and cross-hatching are using multiple lines in the same direction or in perpendicular directions layered over and over to create gradations of value. Hatching and cross-hatching are often associated with inking and comics and intaglio printmaking because they only have one line quality that they can use. The layering of those lines is used instead to create the illusions of value. This week, I encourage you to go and see what Line is doing in the world around you. See what connections you can make. See where you're being led or what direction you're being pointed in. And then consider for yourself, is that the direction you want to go? 